Hey guys, and welcome back to Emerald Coast. Made it to the last day of late autumn, and uh, all of our soybeans are in, and we are over here on our big grass field, uh, doing a little uh, grass foraging, and uh, we're going to be taking this grass over to our fermentation silos, and uh, just just padding our uh, our silos, putting some more stock in there. We still have. Uh, still have some from last year we uh, put some grass in the uh, fermenters but uh, I just wanted to top them off basically and uh, make sure that we've got plenty of grass going forward now we're just working on our outside rows then we'll be uh, start making our up and down passes. Our mower is over there working a bit ahead of us. In fact, we're probably going to stop him um, here in a little bit because we're not going to mow the whole field. We're just going to leave the bulk of this field unmowed at this point. Watch where I'm going. See over in the distance, we've got our orange orchard. Uh, those 55 orange trees, they are uh, they're bringing us in a nice, pretty penny. I think we're bringing in about $29,000 a day uh, from those those orange trees. Very nice. Uh, very nice investment. We'll quickly make our money back. In fact, we may have already made our money back on those. They see the money up a little bit. We have uh, sold off the wool. Uh, we sold off almost six full pallets. And then we've also obviously sold milk and had our... Uh, had our orange sales for the last few days, helping us out there financially. I think once we get up here to the gate, I'm just going to go ahead and duck on out and unload this thing. Swing over here on this side. Let's go ahead and take this over and unload it. Come back and uh, get ourselves another load. Looks like we can go just about all the way around the field uh, before we get a full load. That is, of course, with um, a partial growth stage on that field. Hey, I was having some interesting issues. I was going to set up uh, course play and have it uh, run two tractors and two trailers. And I was going to drive the forage harvester. And uh, I was going to let the two uh, 
horseplay drivers basically um, run alongside me and pick up the uh, basically haul the grass back to the silo and dump it and come back and I figured if we had two we could probably keep a pretty good operation going where everything was running smooth and uh, we weren't really waiting on any one particular uh, tractor to come back um, to the field or anything but for some reason the uh, horseplay driver was was throwing uh, Lua errors fabric script and measure mod and a whole different uh, whole bunch of different Lua errors we're getting tossed about um, Oh, there we go. Let's go ahead and take this opportunity to jump out of here and stop this uh, lady mowing. I think we've got ourselves more than enough. Let's leave this over here. At any rate, I was getting all kinds of errors. Basically, as soon as the uh, horseplay driver would uh, go to unload at the fermentation silo. I tried this about, oh, I don't know, three times. And every time the uh, trailer would go to unload at the uh, fermentation silo, it would, uh, it would just start tossing all kinds of crazy errors so I went and unloaded the uh, trailer manually and that worked just fine so change of plans sold the trailer back parked the tractor um, set up the forager here on the same course that the mower was on and I'll just drive the truck the tractor and the trailer won't get done as quick but uh, we'll still get the job done not really sure why it was you know tossing those errors um, I think we had it automated uh, and unloading last time we did this but then again I don't remember it's been it's been what two game years now I guess we are down to a week and a half, a week and a few days to Christmas. Are you guys ready? You guys ready for Christmas? Uh, probably not ready. Then again, thankfully, I don't have to do too much Christmas shopping. I think I mentioned last week that uh, I bought myself and the wife a new set of tires uh, for Christmas. So we're pretty much set, other than just, you know, some little little fun stuff. Nothing big. Get anything big for each other. And the wife, she likes to buy Christmas presents, so she's the de facto Christmas present purchaser uh, for the kids. And all too often, Christmas is is excitement for me, as well as for the kids, because I have no clue what they're getting. Until they open it up <laughs> some might say well that's that's pretty bad that's a bad dad not knowing what your own kids are getting for Christmas and well sadly that that's the case I think in lots of families is that the, uh, the designated Christmas purchaser is often not both parents uh, somebody will end up being the purchaser of the presents and oftentimes the other person is just as excited or just as curious as to what the kids are going to get uh, as the kids are themselves. Are you guys a, uh, let me know in the comments, are you all a, a live tree or fake tree family? We, uh, when we started out years ago, we were, uh, we were live tree. We, we live treated. I had a really nice, uh, cast iron 
um, tree base. I mean, that thing was probably 30 pounds um, without any water in it. It was heavy. And uh, it had a nice big spike in the middle that you would set the uh, tree on so it wouldn't be sitting flat on the, uh, the base. And I think we did a live tree for a couple years before we had uh, kids. And that was all fun and dandy. But it was a mess to clean up. And then we got a uh, fake tree. And then we had this mindset that we were going to, for some reason, alternate years. We are going to go live tree one year, fake tree the next year, live tree, fake tree, etc. Well, that didn't seem to work out. I think we did one or two more live trees after that. And I haven't really done that since. Uh, the wife keeps hinting that maybe we should uh, do another live tree every year. And I keep in reminding her that unlike when we didn't have kids, we now have a giant dog that is way too hyper for his own size. I mean, he's got the... He's about as hyper as probably a 20-pound dog should be, except he's at least 110 pounds. Um... So we've got a giant hyper dog. We got like I don't know how many cats. Too many. And I don't think a live tree is gonna really work out for us all that great. I think we're gonna stick with the El Faco tree for now. Alright. Go get set up. I'm going to go ahead and dump this load. Let me know in the comments. Are you all live trees or fake trees? See something that really surprised me. Um, I was going to work just after Halloween. And I see these Christmas trees in people's windows. I was like, what? Whatever happened to waiting until Thanksgiving? Yeah, you know, let's have Thanksgiving and then the day after, sure. You want to do the Black Friday thing and, uh, and then come home and set up your Christmas tree? That sounds fine. Let's see what we got running. Yep. Running. We got 54,000 on the intake. We got 255,000 on output. Whatever happened to waiting until Thanksgiving? Now we are... Uh, let's not even let Halloween through. Let's just go ahead and throw that tree up. If you're going to do that, I think you got to be a fake tree family because as you'd be going through like three live trees between now and... Uh, well, not now, but then. Uh, the end of October to uh, the end of the end of December. How many live trees did you go through? It don't last that long. It don't seem like they last that long. I'm sure, if you hardcore live tree families, there are tricks to the trade um, in getting that figured out, but. Uh, Getting those trees to last, but uh, yeah, never seemed to work out good. All right. We uh, what are we doing here? Swing around and see if we can't get you figured out here. Much to pick up. Okay. We'll play the game. We'll pretend we're lifting grass until uh, we get to the end of the field and start making our, our north-south runs.
Oh, little grass. You see a little a bit of a windrow up there. Big ol' loop. Big question is, will this guy be able to make these turns the other end where we got the fence? I don't know yet. So guys, I wanted to uh, let y'all know that I've, I've been thinking about this hard uh, since since the last video and I think I think we're going to draw Emerald Coast to a close. It's nothing to do with uh, 19. It's nothing to do with uh, with with um, with much other than I think that just my general attention span is somewhat limited to about 270 game hours on any given map. I remember about this general time frame in, in map hours just feeling really really done with with Rathlin Island and and as we've been ticking up the hours uh, 250, 260, now we're past 270 it just uh, it just doesn't feel like, uh, you know, it's, it's not the old Emerald Coast it used to be. It feels, uh, feels a little bit too much like, uh, like work, really. Feels just a little bit, uh, like, oh, I gotta go and do what to get Emerald Coast ready to record again? Gotta harvest five, gotta harvest six fields of, of canola. In order to get Emerald Coast in a uh, in a state that I want to be able to uh, record another episode, so um, I think it's just it's a byproduct of just putting in the hours and everything. You know, to do another six game years. I mean, we're talking probably in the end maybe 700 hours on the game save. And uh, yeah, I just I just don't see that it's gonna happen. Uh, maybe if we would have started with bigger equipment um, earlier. One of the mindsets that I had when I started this series it was right after Modern Classics DLC was released, and I was like, oh, I could um, I could emulate the 80s and 90s. Um, like when most of that modern classic stuff would be of, of been in production, and uh, in order to do that, then I kind of limited myself in size, uh, based on the available mods and other equipment and such. So without really wanting to diverge too far from that, um, unless we had to, you know, like with the sugarcane stuff, uh, we really kind of had to divert away from you know, the one row sugarcane harvester in order to uh, in order to basically get anything done in any uh, a semblance of time but you know, it was great while it lasted we've got almost 70 episodes of Emerald Coast between the live streams early on and the recorded videos. Uh, I don't know, I haven't gone back and looked, but I think that's probably the most 
number of videos done on any particular map uh, to this point. And I wouldn't rule out the return of Emerald Coast. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep the game save around and keep the mods around. I wouldn't rule out a return of Emerald Coast. Um, you know, as we as we get further into 2019, but I do think I'm going to attempt uh, to. I think we've got maybe two more weeks into 2018. I'm going to try to get two more videos prepared and get them out so we'll close out Emerald Coast at the end of 2018 calendar year. That'll get us. That'll get us in winter, and then um, and then we'll close it out uh, before we get into spring. I think. We'll dance. A little tractor and trailer dance here. Right. I hope you guys have enjoyed the series. Definitely enjoyed putting it together. Uh, the last. Uh, Last few weeks have been a little, felt a little bit more burdensome um, than maybe they should have in just trying to get things through, you know, through the um, corn harvest, then the uh, soybean harvest and everything, getting the wheat planted for um, next year's crop and everything. Just about done. There we are twenty seven thousand liters. I think we'll probably get one more load. That'll probably do good. That's uh, four loads at twenty seven thousand liters, so just over a hundred thousand liters of uh, silage will be coming out of this uh, this work well, I don't I don't think we feed not how much silage we feed or here feed about, about 12,000 liters of silage every three days 12 or 36,000 liters of silage approximately every transition. It's three transitions a year. So that's about 90. That may be 90,000 liters ish. 100,000 liters every uh, season. Probably go through that much over winter. We don't go through that much in spring and summer. Autumn, we, we kind of ramp up. Yeah. I think if we played this through year four, we would definitely have to do a very large uh, silage haul in year four in order to get our silos back up to, uh, to a good level. Seems like every... Every other year, we need to do a good silage haul. Then on the off year, uh, we just need to uh, do a little um, maintenance silage haul. It was interesting that we didn't get any growth at all in the grass in autumn. The only growth we saw was moving from late summer to early autumn.
I hope you guys are liking the uh, Farm Sim 19 videos. Now, early on, with the release of 19, I uh, I thought I would take the approach of of being a student of the game, as opposed to just jumping right in with videos uh, and live streams related to farming. Did some fun live streams early on. Just uh, kind of ran around the map with the old. Uh, the old pre pre sale bonus retriever. But that was really just to have fun and uh, and kind of explore the map a bit in a in a fun and entertaining way. Um, then I wanted to do you know some how to videos on on animal care and some of the other gameplay uh, dynamics that changed uh, during the uh, transition from 17 to 19. Then once I figured that I had had everything down pat and basically understood and knew how the ins and outs of everything worked, um, that's when I really just finally dived in to a, uh, a recorded and a live stream series. I hope you all like that idea, took, like that approach. Um, there's plenty of folks out there that have definitely just jumped on in and started playing the game. Uh, some to uh, some to their detriment and some fine. Some took it with stride. Some seem to uh, struggle to uh, to transition in. Uh, you know, in a live stream, but that's what I was kind of hoping to avoid uh, in doing it the way I did it, was to try to uh, understand and be wary and knowledgeable of how things were going to function before jumping, you know, head into the, uh, head first into the pool, so to speak. So guys, I'm going to go ahead and finish out this video. We're going to go ahead and finish this trailer and then move on into uh, topping off our animals before winter and then uh, jumping on into winter. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please go ahead and click that like button. If you're not a subscriber, please go ahead and subscribe. Uh, even though we are closing out Emerald Coast in two more weeks. Uh, we have plenty of content out there, both in Farm Sim 17 and uh, Farm Sim 19, as well as some other games uh, in the channel for you to enjoy. Until next time, happy farming.